Welcome back everybody to the Bionicle Inspiration series. Today we're going to be doing a much requested theme which is frames. I've done a few episodes on this on the past. Essentially what I mean by frames is the idea of taking a look at a bunch of Bionicle mocks that are essentially just a Technic or CCBS or Bionicle heavy frame or even a system heavy frame in some examples. Uh, and then from that frame, it's pretty decently easy to reverse engineer, and then you yourself could take that frame and armor it up. So it's essentially, to some degree, instructions for building some more complicated designs or just a really good starting place for building any kind of Bionicle mock because you have the basic framework done and then from there you can do the fun stuff of armoring it up, adding detail, putting your own personal touches on top of it. So I'm going to show you a few examples of frames. Some have instructions, some don't. Uh, some you'll just have to reverse engineer yourself uh, that you could use in your own mocks. But of course be sure to credit the builders if you do use the frames because that's pretty important. And speaking of things that are important, normally I don't talk about things that aren't Lego or pop culture, but this is too big and important of an issue to ignore. So I am, of course, going to simply state Black Lives Matter. Additionally, remember, if you're looking for ways to help out with this movement, help out with the way things are going right now, there's some simple steps you can take. If you're feeling a little lost or confused, seek to understand your white privilege teach other white people what it truly means. If you have any internalized racism, be sure to address any of that sort of stuff and put together some kind of informed plan of how you can be different. And remember, it's okay if you're not fully educated about stuff, but it is your responsibility to educate yourself. Additionally, do the best that you can to amplify the voices of people of color. Make sure that their experiences, art or anything, make sure their voices are heard. Uh, additionally, I do want to be doing a Bionicle Inspiration Series episode simply dedicated to builders who are people of color. Uh, I'm currently putting together as best a list as I can. Um, if you are somebody who is a person of color, be sure to send me a message on any of my social media or send me an email and let me know uh, because I would like to put as many episodes related to that as I can together. Um, I think that's quite important. Uh, so there'll be links in the description as well to places you can donate to help with all of this sort of stuff. And yes, Black Lives Matter. So let's move on to the start of this episode. So the first mock we've got today is kind of a joint mock. Uh, this first one here is by Clockwork Guardian, and this is a frame for one of uh, Luigi Andrews mocks, uh, and that mock is called Gallo. So I think this is really cool, just in general, just a kind of really fun story. So uh, Mr. Clockwork Guardian here, I'll simply read what he said on Instagram. He said, I finally figured this thing out. Uh, he said, this stupid thing out. I don't think it's stupid. I think it's cool. Uh, he said he finally figured this out. It took him three weeks to reverse engineer, uh, but he's finally done it. And he still thinks uh, he doesn't quite know what he's going to do with it yet. But uh, all of this, of course, belongs to Luigi Andrew, as I said before. So essentially, he's taken a look at the mock, taken a look at a lot of the work in progress pictures that uh, uh, Mr. Luigi Andrew, Andrew Steele, has posted on Instagram and just for himself figured out how that was done and made his own version of the frame. And I think that's such a, an important idea and is kind of the basis of a lot of the frames I'll be showing today. And just a, a basis in general for improving is just the general concept of reverse engineering. I think it's a really important process and a really important skill to develop with building Lego because it's, it's something you can learn a lot from. You know, uh, I take a look at Lego images daily, probably, you know, a fair whack of time. I couldn't give you an exact estimate, but it, it's probably a fair bit. And I've been doing that for years. And I think that's a big reason that, well, anyone's skills can improve, not just my own. I know other people who've done exactly the same thing. Just the idea of looking at something repeatedly and then studying it and figuring out how something is done, whether you actively build it yourself or you just kind of think about it in your head, it's a great way of just sort of having a deeper understanding of pieces, figuring out how they can work, ways that they could work, ways that you could use them. Uh, and I think just the general concept of reverse engineering stuff is a really good, is just really good practice. And so great job Clockwork Guardian for doing that. That's a really great way to improve, to, to study how other builders have built and see how that can benefit you. Uh, so by all means, reverse engineer. And the simplest way of doing that is just to, to break down the images sort of, you know, section by section and go, okay, how did he build that arm there? Well, I can easily see that he's used this piece or I can easily see that that piece has been used. Oh, I didn't realize those connected or even try it yourself, put it together, see what you can come up with. But let's break this a bit down. I'll, I'll 
to some degree reverse engineer this uh, along with you here and we can figure out different ways that you yourself could uh, either A, reverse engineer this or just some interesting concepts that are applied to this frame that you could apply to some of your own custom frames. So we take a look at kind of all of the limbs on this mock, specifically the ones on the front, the kind of upper limbs there. He's used a lot of thin lift arm pieces. Now, whether those are slightly thinner lift arm pieces or very long ones, uh, there's a whole bunch of them being used and they're being connected through different types of lift arms and things. But those different beam lift arm pieces there are a really sturdy, simple way of not only having longer limbs, but getting really sturdy ones. You know, a lot of Technic sets use those lift arm pieces. Uh, if you don't quite know what I mean by lift arm piece, I mean, you can kind of see most of them being used, specifically on the back legs there, those, those longer gray pieces there. It's essentially just a big long rod of individual uh, axle holes. Um, and it's just a great way to, to just, it's a very sturdy design, these sturdy long beams that you can use to link things together. It's a great way to design some frames like this, a great way to get some very sturdy connections going. It's super cool. So definitely a handy part to be having in your collection and a handy part to be using. I also like too on all of these limbs, these different Technic panel pieces. They come in dark blue on this mock specifically. And they're a pretty cool piece, really interesting texture to them, really interesting curvature to them. Uh, it helps to create this very organic looking shape and design, but those pieces are kind of getting a little bit more common these days in various Technic sets, some of the larger ones specifically. They come in a whole variety of shapes and colors as well. But it, it's awesome to see how effective that can be in using uh, to, to build a Bionicle mock here. Uh, I've recommended it before. I'll recommend it again now. Take a look at the Technic sets on the shelves in stores because those Technic pieces you can so easily implement into Bionicle mocks, you know. Yes, we don't really have any construction themes going these days, but Technic's about the closest we've got. So definitely have a look at those pieces and see how you yourself could use them in your mocks. Definitely my favorite thing about this Technic frame is the beautiful curve of the back on this mock. He's used these interesting sort of square-shaped uh, lift arm pieces here and then connected them through some socket pieces and a few other connection elements that lock onto those socket pieces and then there's uh, ball joints connecting each of those individual sockets and you just repeat those in, a, in a, a repeated pattern like that and angle them slightly and you get this beautiful organic curve to the back and of course you label that up and label that up you armor that up where did label come from you armor that up you put a few things on there you layer it down maybe I meant layers there uh, but that way you can get this beautiful curve to a back, get this very organic beast-like looking uh, sort of silhouette to the mock. It's a really, really effective design. Surprisingly simple when you break it down, you kind of take the armor off of it and see how it's actually made there. It works well and it looks pretty sturdy too. So that's taking a look at some of the specific points of that frame. Let's actually take a deeper look at uh, Gallo uh, here on Instagram and uh, just sort of break down some of the cool stuff that's going on. So. We can see now how he's kind of labeled up. I said labeled again. What is this? He's armored up. That's so weird. I don't know where that's coming from. He's armored up this mock very heavily here, putting in a whole bunch of additional Technic panel pieces here in dark blue. And it gets this beautiful scale dragon-like look almost, this really interesting beast-like nature to this mock through those repeated patterns there. Uh, and it's as simple as just finding ways of connecting that armor onto the many connection points that we saw in the frame before. I also love to all these spikes coming out of the back that looks fantastic and it's great to see how the legs have been uh, armored up now uh, and uh, just covering up all of the sort of uh, uglier Technic inside of it, which of course, I don't think that's ugly. I think it is actually quite beautiful just to look at it without the armor on. But of course, if you're building more of a beast like this, you really probably wouldn't want to see any of those mechanical detail-y bits underneath. You want it to look more organic in its textures and more uh, beast-like. So uh, it's nice to see all that covered up. It works really well. I also love the face design on this mock using some smaller dragon wing elements that came on some Viking sets as not quite ears. I sort of saw it as kind of just like frills or just some sort of, uh, yeah, something interesting, just a, an interesting way of designing the head there. The little whiskers that he's got there, the beautiful teeth more and those eyes really pops. It's just beautiful. Uh, a really, really menacing, really lovely looking mock. So Great to see uh, Andrew make such a fantastic mock and great to see another builder take so much inspiration from it. And there's no reason you can't take inspiration from the guy who took inspiration to make your own mock that you've been inspired by. Lots of inspiration going around here. That's good. It's good. So there you go. Let us now move on to the next mock. This mock here is by Bregman Nickel and it's called Black Nitro the Gunslinger. 
This is certainly a pretty cool looking mock, a very large one too. You know, we recently did that Titans episode as well. Uh, and it's great to see somebody else doing a very large and in charge mock. So if you were inspired very deeply by that Titans episode and you want to get a bit of a, a better insight into building larger scale mocks, well, this one might help you here with some of the frame designs that it's got going on. So let's start breaking down those frame designs, shall we? So we're starting off with the legs from the images that have been provided here. It's interesting to note that these silver pieces here, they are Visorak bodies from the Visorak sets. Interesting to note that a bunch of those have been used here. Uh, they kind of have a whole bunch of uh, connection points on them, whether that's on the side or on the front there. Uh, and additionally, they get a fair bit of height too. They're surprisingly large pieces. They kind of form the whole basis of the body of a Visorak, which is, you know, surprisingly large uh, part of the of the Visorak there. So great way to get height, great way to get connection points, but also a good way to get strength because it's those lift arms that we're talking about before to some degree. Uh, so it's just some very sturdy, strong connections that can really kind of lock in place there. That's just uh, smart. That's smart. So maybe it's worth investing in some of those Visorak body pieces because they're pretty helpful. Of course, they'll be armored up later, but they're uh, good to use for the connections and the structure and the frame of mocks. So that's pretty cool. What's interesting to note, the very sturdy waist design that he's used here, it's using a whole bunch of hand connector pieces as well as uh, additionally having some of those friction joint pieces underneath uh, so that not only are the um, legs being connected onto the waist, there's a few other connection points to really lock them in place there just to add a bit more stability to it, which is certainly something to think about when you're building a larger scale mock like this. Do you need to factor in uh, additional areas that can hold up some of the weaker points on the mock. And this is a, a good example of that. We've got a few more uh, additional images here as he's building the legs as this mock progresses. And it does seem like to some degree he's reworked the leg design here, which that's a natural part of the process. If you are building your own custom frames or you're just building any mock, it'll of course evolve as you change up the designs or you experiment and play a bit more and you realize actually that doesn't work and you change it up. So interesting to note that. I think that's specifically being done on the lower legs here. Got a few other images here, which are really cool where the legs are all completed and we start to get into the torso. Really interesting to see that towards the top of the torso, it's just straight up a Hero Factory uh, or CCBS uh, torso element element there. Uh, so it's awesome to see that you can still use some of those more simplistic pieces here as uh, kind of easy bases for this uh, frame design here. And, you know, you can see that it's being attached additionally with a few hand connector pieces and it's kind of embedded into the rest of the body and the waist and everything. So it all kind of feeds together and works well. Uh, and I think that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so really interesting to note. And I, I love this image too, where uh, he started to draw all over the image here. I think that's always a, a something to consider. If you're building a work in progress mock, uh, take a picture of it, get your phone out and get some of the markup tools and start uh, start drawing what you're envisioning because uh, that could be a helpful tool for you to just to, to, to kind of break it down into more detail to actually draw over the top of it and go, okay, I want it to be, you know, bursting out here and uh, I want it to be a bit larger over here and da da da. And so just seeing that visual representation might help your mind to better understand what you're doing next. It's a valuable tool. So some interesting pieces of note here on this mock and great to see a frame design for such a large mock as well. This is very well done. On to the next mock now. This one is also by Andrew Steele or Luigi Andrew, or to more specifically, Luigi1456 Andrew. Uh, and this mock is called Congo. So uh, definitely follow Mr. Luigi1456 Andrew over on Instagram because he's a very, very talented builder. Or you can follow him on Flickr as well. There'll be links in the description below. You can always check that out there. But he is a very talented builder and he actually posts a fair few uh, amount of uh, work in progress images on his Instagram. So again, if you want to reverse engineer stuff like we saw before with Clockwork Guardian, uh, you could very easily do that. Uh, so be sure to follow him and uh, study his pictures as he posts them because there's a lot you can learn. And uh, if you don't believe me, we're about to do it. So here's some really, really early images of Congo uh, and you can see a pretty nice breakdown of this waist design. So I think what's super cool is we can see those Visorak bodies again in the gray here on the side. They form this sort of V shape here, which is really interesting. A nice way to get some kind of curvature to the waist design. As a plane flies over, I wonder if you can hear that. Uh, but that's super cool. That's a great way to 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 get a more sort of organic looking V-like torso uh, on this larger scale mock here. That's a nice design. It's also interesting to note how the shoulders have been done on this, uh, this torso design here. Again, we see a whole bunch of hand connectors uh, really locking everything in place. 
and then multiple ball joints there to kind of be building off of. Interesting to note just how sturdy that is, how many ball joints have been used there, how much it's locked in place. There's multiple things holding it down and connecting it. It's not too weak or... There's there's definitely been a lot of thought put into how how much weight is going to be on the arm, and that's being compensated here on the rest of the torso design, which is really smart, really good thinking there, and a, a great way to make sure that your mock is... Uh, not going to be top heavy or things aren't going to fall off or it's going to be too flimsy in areas it's uh it's just right that's cool progressing a little further now we can see uh that there's been a sort of larger beam placed over the middle of the waist here just to lock everything in place just to you know getting a whole bunch of beams and having them connect multiple parts of the mock is always a great way to make sure it's sturdy and all locked in place there so that's really nice to note also cool to see even more friction joints being used before we saw some of them before we see them again. Now when I say friction joints, take a look at the waist here towards the bottom. You can see those light gray, very small hand connector pieces. Uh, I believe those are called friction joints. Uh, there may be more technical names or other people might call them other things. That's the, the term I've heard the most. Uh, you saw them a whole bunch in uh, or uh, Hero Factory 4.0 I want to say they first came out. Uh, and they've kind of appeared in sets ever since then. Most of your contraction stuff has it. Um, but what's so cool about them is they are very, very strong. Sometimes they can be very hard to separate. They uh, really, really lock things in place. So if you are building a larger scale mock, those are kind of invaluable because they really lock things down and make sure the connections are very sturdy, uh, which is great. And that's essentially what you want. You want things to be strong uh, and really hold everything together if you are building a larger scale mock so that you don't run into issues of it falling apart or not being able to support its own weight. That's really cool. So cool to see that that's being used both on the waist and on the shoulders, uh, that same shoulder design we spoke about before. That's really cool. As we progress even further here, we can see that those Visorak body pieces were taken off, but there was additional things being added there. So it became a little bit more boxy. It doesn't really have that uh, more organic kind of V-like shape to it. But what I think is so interesting is, as we take a look at the arms as well, uh, how we've studied the frame so far and how this uh, torso is being put together, it's interesting to note that the arms and the torso are essentially just larger cubes or rectangles. And the curvature, the more sort of organic flowing sort of ovals and circles to the design, that's mainly coming through through the system that's being placed on top of it. I mean, the arms alone are a good example of that. You can kind of see in this image here, they're more rectangular, but those olive green curved things on them does make it have that more sort of muscular rounded look to it that makes it look more realistic, which is cool, which is cool. So it's great to note that you yourself could do something fairly similar, uh, get a whole nice technique uh, kind of frame, and then just simply attach system on it that has some more sort of, you know, curved, beautiful looking textures to it. Uh, and you can achieve a whole new look. And then we see the mock continue to progress more and more. And it's very interesting to note that uh, Mr. Luigi Andrew here has used a bunch of clip elements uh, so that he can get some more interesting angles. Just again, to, to, to create that kind of curvature so that the mock isn't super blocky and rigid. It has more sort of uh, smooth flowing lines uh, on it. It's really cool to note whether that's through, you know, clip pieces to get uh, you know, cool looking angles or just like we can see here on the shoulders, simply actually using curved elements to get that more rounded look to it. That's awesome. And then this here is Congo. What an awesome looking mark. I love the head design on this, it being this uh, interesting alligator man. That's just awesome. The weapon itself is also super cool. Uh, and there's just a lot to love about this. Some really beautiful system integration here it's just a phenomenal looking mock um and it's been really cool to kind of see that breakdown from the early frame into the final mock and that's a process you yourself can do so that's super super cool so nice work there let's move on to the next mock this is by big nickel and it's called the big nickel frame so go follow big nickel on instagram and you can uh, check out this post here because it's a really good post it has instructions. Ooh, I've spoken about the Bignacle frame before. I've even done an episode specifically on the Bignacle frame because it is a fairly famous at this point Bionicle frame design that you yourself can build. Uh, and there's been a whole bunch of different mocks that have adapted this frame. Uh, and it's always interesting to note this is a little bit more CCBS heavy. So if you have some more modern pieces, uh, you can really play around with them there. It's using a whole bunch of piston pieces too. Pistons are always important to uh, stabilize a mock, make sure it's uh, sturdy and holding up its own weight and stuff. Uh, there's a lot to love about this. But let's take a look at a mock that actually uses the big nickel frame so we can see what it looks like in the end, in the final results here. This mock is by Corn Builder and it's called Banogenium the Brute. 
So it's interesting to note on the torso of this mock, he's used a Nocturne mask and a Gadunka mask. And that seems to kind of be covering up the kind of gap that was in the torso on the Bignacle frame. It kind of just had those two larger pistons and it was essentially empty in the middle. But instead that's been covered up here by using some very large pieces to kind of fill up that kind of real estate on the mock. And I think that's very wise because that torso has, of course, been designed to be more poseable. So just covering it up but having it relatively hollow in the middle, I imagine it's relatively hollow, he might have tweaked the design a little bit here, but uh, it's, it's nice to know that it hasn't really sacrificed the posability. It can still move and flow, uh, but it is still covered up so there's no gaps, but it, uh, it looks more whole. The sword on this mock is also super cool. You can also see just how much posability is on uh, the leg design here on this mock. Uh, just some of, the, some of the poses that he's getting into there. Yeah, it's a real, it really shows how effective the Bignacle frame is at being very posable as well. So if you are looking for a more posable frame design, this is also a good example here. Sword design on this mock is also super cool. And the back here with these interesting sort of, not quite wings, but just sort of weird attachments on the back. Uh, it's just unique. It looks cool. And I also like the idea of doing that. You build the Bignacle frame, but then you add your own distinct personal touches to it. You add your own designs, your own thoughts, your own ways of building to it, and you you personalize it, you make it your own, you know. These wings weren't really on the typical original Bignacle frame, but uh, Corn Builder here has added his personal touches, and it works well, so that's great. Let's now move on to the next mock here. This is by Na-Ga, and this frame here is a very nice frame design. I don't know if it has a specific name, uh, but it kind of just says new frame on uh, on Twitter here, so we'll just call it that for now. But this is a really nice frame design and it uses mixel joints really well. Take a look at the head design here, uh, simply using those mixel joints there to kind of form the basis of the head design. Obviously you'd build off of that and you'd make it look more like an actual proper head, but it's cool to note that those little itty bitty ball joints there, those little mini ball joints that you can use to connect mixel joints to are a good basis for that. And additionally you can see some more mixel joints being used on the shoulders, which is a cool way to possibly add some more uh, pronounced shoulder armor, building some system off of that to, 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 to use that to your advantage. That's really cool. So I love how the waist design of this mock has been done, how it sort of curves inward and outward and has a sort of almost Z shape to it. Uh, that's just an interesting way of, of doing it, whether you armor that up or not. It's just, uh, it's just different. It's not, not as rigid and not as, um, sort of straight or, or, or beam-like in some fashion. It is more, yeah, it kind of has almost a similar curvature to, to how a human spine might look. Uh, I imagine the posability on that is, is, is very effective and very good, so that's cool. It's also interesting to note that the arm design on this mock is just your straight up CCBS joints. That's perfectly fine, you know? There's no reason it has to be super customized and amazing. You can just have it be exactly that and that's fine, it works. The leg design of this mock here, again, uses a lot of hand connectors. We've noticed a fair few amount of hand connectors this episode, haven't we? So uh, cool to note that you can arrange them in certain fashions like this to get some very interesting posability and some very interesting designs. Also cool to note the waist design here. Again, multiple connections across the whole mock, really connecting very far up into the waist as well, so it's sturdy and strong. A very nice design for sure. And last but not least, we have a mock by Kelvin Lowe, otherwise known as Chubby Bots. And this mock is called Ghoul Busters. A great name. Uh, but this is also a great mock. So it's uh, this really awesome Hidden Side inspired mech here. The really striking, beautiful color scheme uh, that, of course, fits a few minifigures as well. But Kelvin, the, the mad lad he is, he's included a few pictures here of the breakdown of it, the frame of it, how you yourself could even build it. Uh, and by all means, be sure to check out ChubbyBots on YouTube. He's a very, very talented builder, and he posts all sorts of craziness like this where you can see the frames for mocks. Uh, he does that quite a fair bit, so be sure to check him out. I, I, I say that, I, I can never say that enough. Uh, he's a very, very talented builder who loves to show off how he's made his stuff, which is uh, awesome, awesome. So taking a look at the frame, it's using a whole bunch of bracket pieces. This one's a little bit more system heavy. So if you really want to play around with some system elements, uh, this is, might be the one for you. Uh, we can see all those bracket pieces being used, but there's a lovely integration between system and CCBS as well. You know, the upper arms, the upper legs use simple CCBS shells with some friction connectors as well. And they transition into system using some of those very interesting socket pieces that actually end with your typical system studs on them. They came in some Exoforce sets, they came in some Ninjago sets, they've come in a whole bunch of different sets. Uh, and they're a really great way to just very simply transition into Bionicle. 
That's awesome. Or transition to system if you're doing buy on a call. You know, they're just a, a funky, cool piece to have. And I think Kelvin uses them flawlessly here. And, you know, when we do take a look at the mock as as a whole, when we take a look at it as, uh, we, you know, with all the armor on top, uh, the system and the CCBS, they flow perfectly into each other. The textures are very unified. They look almost identical. Uh, it's just gorgeous. It's very, very nicely done. The make itself is great. I love all the little details on the back of it as well. Uh, there's just a lot to love. Very nicely done. And really, really cool to see such an awesome frame design here that could work so flawlessly with a whole bunch of system pieces, but also still work very well for a Bionicle or Hero Factory inspired mock. So that's been it for this episode of the Bionicle Inspiration Series. Hopefully those frame designs helped you out. And if you're looking to build a frame, it could be a really great starting point for a mock. So something to think about. And of course, if you enjoyed this frame episode, like I said, there is a f frame episode all about the Bignacle frame, and there is a frame episode just about other frames that exist. Uh, so be sure to check those out as well if you want to take a look at even more frames, because that might uh, get those inspirational juices flowing even more. Be sure as well, like I said, check the links in the description below to all the mocks you saw in today's episode. Check out some of the other stuff they've done. They're phenomenal builders. Additionally, you can check uh, some of the links in the description as well to some of my social media. Uh, I've been very busy at the moment, but uh, my uni studies are getting towards the end as I transition from the end of the term into holidays, so you can expect some new and exciting posts coming soon from me, uh, which uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with and quite excited about, so stay tuned for all of that very soon. Additionally, if you want to see some of your own mocks on the show, you can send those mocks to me through the email you're currently seeing on your screen. That email is also in the description below, so if you want to copy and paste that, you can. Uh, all you got to do is send me some images, send me any information you feel is important to include with those images, and email that to me, and you're good to go. In the near but distant future, they'll be featured on the show, but I do have a lot of submissions to work through, so remember, your patience is key. But that's it for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, and bye for now.